This rig is nightmare mode right now. It's a 12 card 6600 rig and it just keeps giving me issues, GPUs crashing. I thought it was maybe my overclocks. Now I don't think it is. I just was down here last night for probably like an hour because this card would not show up. Only 11 cards would show up. It's been fine and then it just started giving me a ton of issues. And I think it was a couple of things. I replaced the riser after testing a few different ones and now that card is recognized but then this one would drop out and then I'd get that one in and another one would drop out. I was just going around in circles. And then the other weird thing is the miner will not start automatically in Hive OS. I have to go in and start it, which tells me that there's something going on here that it just doesn't like. The other thing I ran into, we'll go around here last night, which is a fault of my own, is it kept dropping connection. And turns out, I think it was a bad ethernet cable because if I even like touched it just a little bit, the lights, the status lights would go off and then they'd come back on and it would drop HiveOS. So I have a different ethernet cable in there. I make my own ethernet, so that's my fault. So I lost, you know, probably a good half hour <laughs> because that's my fault, but it's still giving me issues. I've reset overclocks. I even had the stable overclocks in that I was using just fine. And so what I think it might be that I've actually never had a problem with, with all these rigs and all these motherboards is it might be that these are too close together, the PCIe one by going into the motherboard. Um, and I'll show you why. Let me power this off. It's not even doing anything right now because it's crashed. And let's shut off server power supply. There we go. So what you can notice on these, and this is nothing new, is you can see those little prongs that stick out the back of the PCIe. Some of them, depending on the generation of riser, are worse than others. So what happens is, you know, you slot them in here to the motherboard. And I think because it's so tight, when you actually populate this with 12 or 13 GPUs, that they touch. I don't know if you can see, they touch probably a little too close. They touch the back of the USB port next to it, and I think it's causing it to short out. So there's like an old school solution to this, which is just to use some electrical tape around the one by, uh, and that should stop it. So I'm gonna do that right now. So really what most people do is they just take electrical tape, make sure not to cover the contacts there, uh, and then you can just wrap this around all the way to the other side, um, and then just cut or pull this and then that should stop any shorting that could happen between the contacts because they're now covered. I've also seen people use pliers and just like bend them or cut them off, um, but I'm gonna go this route since I don't wanna break anything. And now, when I plug that in to the motherboard, it's gonna make sure that if whatever I have next to it, I guess I didn't really have to do that one because it's on the end, but <laughs> whatever's right next to it, they're not gonna touch uh, and short each other out. So hopefully this gives me some more stability on this rig. At least it's something that is a next step and I have been having issues as cards have dropped out. As I like adjust these, they come back. And I think that's absolutely the reason, especially on this generation of riser. So I'm gonna do the rest of these. Okay, that is done. I had just enough electrical tape. Actually, I didn't do the last one, but that should be okay. Just enough electrical tape uh, to do all of that. So let's get this back plugged in. Oh shit, almost dropped it off the table. Let's get this back plugged into ethernet and then we'll power this up and see what we get. Where's my ethernet cable? Uh, here it is. Wait, is this it? Nope. Why is everything so hard? Where did it go? Why is everything so hard? Um, found it. Okay. Look at this, this is a mess over here. Okay, let's plug this in. Server power supply. Cool. ATX power supply on. 
So we got lights on all of those. So let's see, I'm going to look in HiveOS as soon as it boots up and we're gonna see what we get here. Rig is on, I'm gonna refresh HiveOS and let's, I hope that all 12 GPUs show up here, let's see. Yes, okay, all 12 of them show up, so that's good news. But I wonder if this miner is gonna start, I can't figure this out, it only ever happens with this rig. So let's go over in the shell. And it should just start up, but it's just not. Well, it booted and then immediately went offline. So I'm not really sure why it did that. Uh, let's give it another reboot here. I don't know what else to try with this rig. Let's see what we get here. Maybe I got a reflash Hive OS. I don't know why it would just be going offline. The rig doesn't power off. It stays online totally fine. Let's see what we get here. So it's up again. Let me log in to the shell here. See if all the GPUs are recognized. It's, it's taking longer than I think it should be. Okay, all 11 GPUs. Um, now what, I don't know why I can't see beyond this bar. What is happening here? What is Windows doing? Okay, so I got the shell up. Let's go ahead and log in to that. And see if all the GPUs are recognized. It's taking longer than I imagine it should be, which isn't a good sign. Rig seems online, but fans aren't spinning, which tells me the miner has not started yet. And we still are not making any moves here. Says booted two minutes ago. I think this thing is gonna crash again any second now, and I cannot figure out why. Maybe I should try reflashing Hive OS. You guys ever run into these issues? I don't know what else to do. I think this thing is just gonna crash. Maybe I should just retry resetting all of my overclocks. Let's do that right now. So I'm gonna go in here. I really worked on these pretty hard and they were really stable. So I'd like to save these. So let's just open up Notepad. I already have my core voltages. Core clock should be totally fine. This is mining on Kapow. Let me save those as well. Um, just because like these were stable, but I guess things can change. Let's get the rest of these in here. Okay, there's all the clocks that were stable for a while, but I guess things can change. So I'm gonna just get rid of core voltage completely memory controller voltage completely, and memory voltage completely. I think memory clock should be okay, so I'm gonna leave that, hit save. There, you can see the rig is offline again, so it did crash. Come back, let's give it another reboot here. Everything's coming back online, and then we'll see what we get. And so this rig was totally fine for a long time, since I made the video on it, which is probably a couple months ago, and I've just been slowly doing the overclocks on it. And one of the things I did notice though along that way is it wouldn't start the miner automatically if it did reboot or if I rebooted it. And I was just like, whatever. Or it would start it, but it would take like five to 10 minutes, which is really odd. I've never had a rig do any of those things. It just really, the miner starts right away. And if it crashes, it crashes right away. So it's really interesting. So this one's giving me trouble that I've never really had before. So let's, I guess, good troubleshooting, just put it all the way back to defaults. I haven't touched the core voltage or the core clock or the memory clock yet, because I don't think that would be causing it, but that is something I can tweak afterwards. Let's see how it's doing. So online, fans are all spinning. Let's take a look at HiveOS uh, and see what it's reporting here. So still shows offline, but let's see if the shell is up, it is. Let's see if it responds any faster than it was before, which could be a nice telltale sign, a little bit. It's loaded all of the GPUs. Um, let's see if the miner, see this is like, it's just not starting. Unless I do miner start, which I'm gonna do right now. If I do miner start, then it will start. 
Team Red Miner and I can load it up and watch it. I don't know why it's not automatically starting. Could still be something with the overclocks. I don't see uh, any issues with the load averages look totally fine, so that's not causing it. All 11 GPUs are there. It's on the latest version of Hive OS. I think I'm running the beta. It's starting to mine now, okay. So maybe I have to just really mess around with those overclocks again. Maybe I just had the uh, VDD or the memory voltages too low. I'm not really sure. But that is something that I'm gonna keep working on and I have it on Fiora right now because uh, I'll do a video on this separately, but I'm gonna move, since I did Neoxa, finish that project, I'm gonna move over to Firo and complete the node, fans are kicking on, complete the node that I started on Firo quite a while ago um, and get to the thousand Firo that I need to do that, which I don't have much to go. I'm also interested actually in how much wattage this rig is pulling right now since I re reset all that. It was around 900. Yeah, look at that. Now it's up to like 1380. So I definitely have to figure out getting that down, but at least it's running even though the miner wasn't starting on its own. And those I think will get around 14.5 mega hash uh, with the core clock and the memory clock that I have set right now. And that server power supply is gonna start screaming because of how much load it's under right now. So I'm gonna have to start working on that. Oh, find some time to do that. But anyway, um, I guess that's it for this video. I got more things I wanted to talk about, but I'll save that for another one. And I will do a full video on this because that server power supply is probably gonna explode and this might be the last video you ever see from me. Mm -hmm.